So you want to talk about working load boards and brokered opportunities? I'm going to share some of my experiences and my insight on this segment of the Gig Geezer. If this is your first time checking out the Gig Geezer, if you're a returning visitor of the Gig Geezer, thanks for coming by. And if you would not mind, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. Before I get into this segment, I want to acknowledge a couple of folk whom I've met in recent weeks. The first guy is a young man whom I met in the parking lot of Lowe's in Sumter, South Carolina. I actually was leaving Lowe's when a guy in a in a Ford F-150 pickup truck kind of hailed me down and then he stopped right alongside of me and he says Mr. Gig Geezer I really enjoy your content I mean Adrian made my day just by just by telling me that he was a subscriber to the channel and he'd been checking out my content Adrian it told share with me that he's looking to get into the to the um, ownership and operation of a box truck and uh, he's he's pretty far along in that process and so I do wish Adrian well the next the next person whom I met is also a gig geezer subscriber his name is Anthony and he lives in the Columbia South Carolina metropolitan area Anthony what's most noted about him is that he also owns a Ford Transit 250 Sprinter van and uh, whereas his is whereas both of our vans have the longer wheelbase 148 inch wheelbase he has a high roof van as opposed to mine being a medium roof van but anthony told me upon us meeting which is on a bungee opportunity he says i figured that eventually i would meet you on one of these things and lo and behold he was right we did meet and uh we worked well on this project and it didn't take long to complete and all and uh i just want to acknowledge uh, having met anthony as well so i'm now a couple minutes into this segment of the gig geezer and what I want to share with you is that there are many ways of there are many ways of I guess you would say obtaining load opportunities for pay. Personally, since the end of March, I have had brokered primarily brokered opportunities that have come uh, as a direct result of my having my authority. That does not mean you have to have your authority for all these opportunities because. Uh, you can actually deliver loads for a carrier um, and with a carrier you may have a carrier dispatcher who may approach you with load opportunities that you may re reply with a bid amount the difference is that you're not literally searching the load boards physically for them the, the dispatcher is searching the load boards and as these opportunities come he may send it out to you to consider you respond with a, a bid or a counter offer and then usually if you have gotten a bid they get back with you within about 15 minutes if you don't hear from them in 15 minutes you know that somebody else gotten it there's that is one way how a lot of people gain uh, brokered opportunities you don't need an MC number for that and you really don't need a USDOT number the MC number is important because when you look to uh, transport goods across state lines and the keywords across state lines or interstate, then you need an MC number or your authority. If you're looking to transport goods within your state border, your resident state border, that is called interstate and all you need is a USDOT number. But for the sake of this conversation, this is all going to be based on your MC number having your own authority. Now, I'm on multiple load boards. And the reason why I say I am on multiple load boards is because I am the one who's actually searching out these loads on these uh, platforms. Some of them are, uh, are mediums by which I have subscriptions and others are by which I have direct contracts with the brokers who also have their own load boards. Does Now, you quite honestly, is there advantage of one over the other? Actually, no, because what happens is some of these brokers, while they may post it on their load board, they may post it also on other load boards trying to get the best rate. I will say that on average, I may send out 
25 to 30 emails each day on bidding on certain load opportunities that come across that I'm able to uh, identify as one that I might be interested in. I may also make anywhere between 20 and 25 phone calls each day, either following up and or trying to confirm a number so that ultimately this broker say, okay, we're gonna go with you and then they will ultimately send me a rate confirmation sheet, which is one of the most important things you gotta have and um, a bill of lading and or delivery order and other pertinent documents that may apply to this load. So um, when dealing with specific brokers, I may see as few as three to five uh, load opportunities that, that are posted that day. On some days in which where it is very busy, you may see more than a dozen. Sometimes you may see some over the course of a seven to eight hour stretch, uh, them posting every hour. It varies. Now, all of that may just result in my having one brokered opportunity that day. But in the greater scheme of things and my personal enterprise, that one opportunity may make my day. That may be the basis of how I try to uh, try to pursue other opportunities. If the gig apps aren't working, namely the gig food delivery apps or the last mile delivery apps, a brokered opportunity can really make the day. In a, along those lines, or my $10 word, concomitantly, you may, a, may be able to, with a brokered opportunity or a low board opportunity, use it interchangeably, you may be able to add a gig app opportunity, as I shared in this segment of the Gig Geezer, in which I had uh, completed an opportunity from Charlotte to Dallas that paid me $1,100. Within about 30 minutes, I happened to catch a, a gig app opportunity, a last mile gig app opportunity that ultimately paid me $310.57. And then further, further along, as I'm heading back to South Carolina, I happened to catch an opportunity in Mobile, Alabama, as I'm heading back to South Carolina, as I mentioned, that one paid $47.01. So that day, I earned over $1,450. So you see where I'm going with that, but we're talking still about load boards and brokered opportunities. Here are some of the things that I think a carrier, which would be what they were referred to you as slash driver may encounter over the course of a day. One of them is rejection. Rejection goes with any business. So that means you may encounter brokers that tell you, we don't want a sprinter van or they may tell you that your authority is too new or that you're not registered with them as a carrier so that they're not booking that load with you. Now, that's kind of like the credit question. How can you get credit when you got no credit? But you deal with people who are like that. They just don't want to deal with you. But when they talk about having your, your authority being too new, as I shared in this segment of the Gig Geezer, I talked about how um, the process is that you may purchase your authority but then you've got to wait 21 days before it becomes active. And even after you get that um, notification that your authority is active, that doesn't mean that you're going to have that, um, that immediate access to um, load, load board or brokered opportunities. Many brokers require you to have an active authority of at least 90 days. So that means if you applied for your uh, authority on, say, like January 10th, that means you will get a notification on January 31st that your authority became active. But then you've got to wait 90 days. So you may wait 90 days. That's going to be May 1st. But it won't actually show up as active on many of these uh, portals until May 2nd. That's how it works. Now, once you're active, you may be able to complete a carrier packet with some of these brokers. But then some brokers require your authority to be active 180 days or even 270 days, which has been the case for me with a few places that I've gotten on recently. And then some of them may require you to have an active authority for a year or even the worst case that I've seen, two years. These are all things that I've shared previously on in previous segments of the Gig Geezer. But what's some other things you may acquire? What are some other things you may experience while out there? 
A broker may tell you that as soon as you call, it's already been covered. That's a common thing that you will hear. Or if you have to email to bid on it, you may not get a reply. In fact, um, if I were to put a percentage on it, it's probably um, at a minimum 95% of the bids that I put in, I get no reply. Um, the broker, when you call, hangs up on you. Or what you learn to do is as soon as they tell you something you don't want to hear, you hang up on them before they hang up on you. Um, you may get a contact phone number in which the phone, it's a wrong phone number. It's not a working phone number. Or what happens to me in many cases, like last week on consecutive days, um, I, I put a bid on the, on the load. Um, in fact, here's a good example. Last Friday, October 21st, 2022, on a particular broker's um, uh, load board, there was an opportunity from Greenville, South Carolina, up to Dulles, Virginia. Now, I figured that that's an airport opportunity. The offer amount was $500. I bid $600 on it. And so I called my assigned broker to see if I can get more money on it. While she told me that, hey, okay, I'm going to try to see if I can get you some money. I saw on the phone, at least on the on the load board, where that had disappeared <laughs> because somebody came in and either took it for the offered amount of $500 or bid less and the and another broker actually said, okay, we go with you instead. And that happened actually on consecutive days. So um, there's always the potential of someone booking it behind you or up under you. Now, another way that you know that you may have missed out on the load opportunity when you're dealing with uh, load boards is when they tell you you have to call and instead of you getting getting somewhat of an immediate uh, you know, phone ringing connection, you're still on hold. Well, that, there's a better than 95% chance that you might as well just move on to the next one. Then, what's another thing? Negotiating for these load opportunities. Again, if you go through a carrier dispatch, well, then they're doing the negotiating for you. When, you're doing, when you are doing this yourself, you're negotiating directly with a with a broker. And so if you're if you've never been in sales or you've never been in negotiating positions, um, you're gonna have to get comfortable real fast in order to thrive in something like this. Now, on some occasions, you may be removed from a load. That's happened to me a couple of times as well. On this segment of the Gig Geezer, I shared where because of a mechanical failure in which I uh my right front uh my right, foot, my right front wheel bearing went out on me. I contacted my bro my broker that something had happened. And because of the timing of things, the customer, the shipper, needed someone to be there at a specific time or sooner. And so I was taken off of that opportunity. That cost me $1,100. That was an 1100 opportunity from Knoxville, Tennessee to Miami. And it wasn't so much as really the the um the opportunity it was really because i went after it because it was an opportunity for me to take my queen with me to south florida because she had people that who were near and dear to her she had she may have had a chance to visit another that happened to me actually on friday october 21st i had negotiated on a on a load from uh savannah georgia that was going to drop off uh, on Monday, tomorrow, October 23rd in the Roanoke, Virginia area. Well, I'm heading there, but then what I know, I happen to notice, just happen to notice that these people had tried to get in contact with me. And I did not know that they had tried to get in contact with me. I had my phone in my hand the entire time, never felt the phone buzz or anything like that. Come to find out I had my speaker off. So I never knew that they tried calling me. They tried calling me seven times. And then when I finally get in contact with them, they said, hey, man, we're taking you off of that. we take you off of that load. And I hope you understand why, because we're trying to get in contact with you. We can't. We need to get in contact. We need to book it with someone whom we can stay in contact with. I mean, we're all grown folk. And so I understand that these things happen. So now at this point, we're talking 15 minutes into this segment of the gig geezer. And by now, I'm pretty sure there are people who be asking, well, who are some of the brokers and load boards that you deal with? 
I'm not divulging it. And the reason why I'm not divulging it is because um, it's kind of a standard thing. I know that there may be other people who will divulge some of the places that they deal with. I'll, I'll just put it like this. There, there, there's a good friend of mine whom I'm in daily contact with and he worked load boards and I don't know half of the load boards or brokers that he's dealing with. Same as he doesn't know half or any or many of the uh, brokers or load boards that I deal with. It's kind of a mutual respect though. But then again, there are times that we may collaborate. We may send each other one that may fit each other's uh, fancy. But by and large, we don't know all the people that each of us respectively deal with. So I may piss off some of you. But then again, um, that's just a, that's just the way it is with the business. You just don't share everything with everyone. Um, another example that I'll give you, and I'm and I know I'm taking too much, uh, and I'll just leave it at this. There's another example I'm going to give you. I've shared many times about Cleo Hicks, the guy that taught me, um, who the guy who mentored me in bowling. Um, Cleo, for as much time he spent around me, never shared every, never shared the entirety of what he knew about bowling. Many of the things that I learned, yes, was a result of the conversations I had with him, but yet many of the things that I learned was really on my own. And it just so happened that I was able to also add a few things that have, have enabled me to help other people from time to time as well. But Cleo never divulged everything to me. And that's something I didn't realize until decades later. So basically, I'm like a teacher, uh, at least I kind of see my channel as like a teacher with a chalkboard or a dry erase board or uh, whatever teaching tool that is now. I'm putting up a I'm putting up the concept and then it's up to you to apply the concept. So what I'm going to do now is kind of give you some examples of how brokered opportunities um, factor into my daily, weekly, monthly and soon to be annual production in my Sprinter slash cargo van ownership and experience. In recent weeks, there has been a significant up. I, I have had a significant uptick in um, the uh, uh, brokered load opportunities because the gig apps correspondingly have not been as plentiful. The gig app opportunities have not been as plentiful and they've not been as uh, well paying as in, um, in comparison the brokered opportunities. I would prefer working gig apps as anyone would because you're able to stay closer to home you're not going to use as much gas you're not going to spend as much money but if you're out here to make money and to keep things going as i think anybody would then you're going to do what's next so so far as of today uh october 22nd 2023 i have earned more than sixteen thousand dollars this year via brokered opportunities overall so far this year, I have earned over $88,300 in 2023. So the brokered opportunities have comprised just shy of 19% of the money that I've made this year. Now, in short, I work a hybrid of components that comprise my daily, weekly, and monthly production. So that means, um, and I also will say it this way, um, if you've also been a consistent follower of my channel, you will have seen how I've begun. I have since uh, June uh, posting or showing on my on some of my uploads how I have earned consistently now over two thousand dollars a week and over ten thousand dollars a month. The ten thousand dollar month number is has been since July, and even here in October where I am pushing. $7,900 earned so far this month, I am projecting to earn over $10,000 for the fourth consecutive month in 2023. And again, the $88,300 definitely is projecting me or has me on pace to earn more than $100,000 this year. Now, how have brokered opportunities factored into the daily and weekly stuff? Just using this month alone, if I use the week of October 2nd through October 8th, I had five brokered opportunities. I had one on Monday, October 2nd, Tuesday, October 3rd, 
Wednesday, October 4th, Thursday, October 5th, um, Friday, October 6th. That week, I earned $2,235. Brokered opportunities accounted for more than $725, $925, Brokered opportunities accounted for $1,400 of that $2,235. So about two-thirds of the money that I earned that week. For the week of October 9th through October 15th, I earned $2,318.44. I was secured, well, on Monday, October 9th, I had a brokered opportunity that actually canceled because the shipment was not had not arrived, but I got cancellation money for the amount of $150. So I actually had two brokered opportunities that I completed. One was on October 10th, and that was for $200. And then on Friday, October 13th, that was for $325. So out of the 2300 that I earned, 675 came from brokered opportunities. So roughly eh, about a quarter of the money earned. This past, this, this current week, which is ending today, October 22nd, I have earned over $2,800. I had a brokered opportunity that I've already shared completed on October 16th for $1,100. Then I had one on Thursday, October 19th for $300. And then yesterday, Saturday, October 21st, for $525. That totaled $1,925, or again, roughly about two-thirds of the money that I've earned. So that should give you an idea how brokered opportunities have factored in for, for me um, so far in 2023, but also just some realistic things that you've got to kind of look out for if you choose to do the over the road thing. And one last thing. Now, my definition of over the road is when you have decided to work multiple days beyond your home base state or home base region. So that means in my case, I went over the road last week because I left, um, I went up to Charlotte from Columbia, South Carolina to pick up a load that was taking me to the Dallas um, metropolitan area. As I left after leaving Charlotte, I went to Greenville, North Carolina for a load that paid the $325. So then after dropping off in Texas, I'm driving back. Um, so I, ba I drive back through the states of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. That's where I picked up a, 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 I picked up a last mile opportunity in Mobile, Alabama area along the way up I-65. And that paid $47.01. So um, I was out of Columbia for from Friday till Tuesday evening. So that was really my first true over the road opportunity. Um, but some people are out for weeks at a time, two, three weeks at a time. And they don't really come back home until they find opportunities that lead them back home if they choose to go back home. Whereas if you work local and regional, you know that means that you are going to be working within this. You're going to work either specifically within your state, close to home, or within a certain region. Now, I shared in this segment of Gig Geezer how I have had opportunities or have traveled through nine states during my Sprinter slash cargo van ownership op and operation experience. Of that, seven states have been in which I have earned opportunities. One person asked me, was it by low board? Well, it was a combination of both when he asked me about um, opportunity or opportunities in Florida. I had a brokered opportunity that day from Sumter, South Carolina, arriving in Jacksonville. And then while I was in Jacksonville, I happened to catch a last mile opportunity in Jacksonville before heading back up through Georgia to South Carolina. So it could be a little bit of everything. Now, hopefully what I shared in this segment of the gig geezer really is just going to kind of um, get your try to get you to thinking about some of the things that you have to consider when you say that you want to work load board or brokered opportunities or when you think about doing the over the road thing. I also shared in this segment of the gig geezer how there's a money component in that hey, if you plan to go out there, you better have some money in place to be able to go out there because things do happen. In fact, in this segment of Gig Geezer, when I shared about the uh, the uh, 
wheel bearing that went bad. That cost me five hundred dollars to have it replaced, and uh, and it just so happened that day I had eight hundred dollars cash on me. I rarely take, I rarely have cash on me, and on that day I just happened to have it on me. So hopefully you've gotten something out of this segment, the Gig Geezer. Hopefully it is a, a, of some use and some information. It may be of some motivation and some encouragement in your consideration or actual um, ownership and operations experience of a spinner slash cargo van. And with that, if you like the content that's provided in this segment of the Gig Geezer or in any other segment of the Gig Geezer, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome the comments in the section below.